Hi and welcome back. I hope the belly construction went well and if you haven't watched the video on how to do belly construction yet, please go back to my channel and give that a viewing. Today we're going to add appendages. So legs, maybe tails, things like that. When you add appendages, what's really important is before you add them, I need you to really study your animal's anatomical structure. Look at those legs. How do they fold up underneath the animal, next to the animal? How do they come out of the animal's body and where? What parts of the legs are longer? What parts are shorter? And what shapes do each of those parts have? So make sure you really do some studying before you start building. The other thing to keep in mind is if you are trying to build an animal and stand it up on its legs, those legs sticking out of that heavy clay body aren't going to hold it up. You really need to fold your legs into your animal, have your animal in a seated or a laying position, or otherwise support the weight of the body on anything but those clay legs because they're just going to collapse underneath that big old belly. Okay? So take some time, study the anatomy, and then move on to the next step, building those appendages. Have some fun, take your time, and be analytical. I am ready for my next step, which is adding limbs. I've built my belly. I've attached the belly to the base because my frog needed a base because his toes are a little skinny and delicate. So that's the base that I built with a lily pad. I cut a hole in the bottom of the uh, belly, smoothed the inside, and tapered down the edge of the hole, and then attached it to this base. When I open up the top of this frog to put the lid on, I'll be able to go in and clean the bottom of that space as well. Now I'm ready to add my legs. I have my sketch to help me. I also have printed images of leopard frogs, which is the type of frog that I'm doing. And I happen to have built earlier this year a little leopard frog out of clay. So I'm gonna use this as my reference as well. When you're building the limbs, what you really need to do is look at the structure, the anatomical structure of your animal. Where are the joints? How big are the different parts? How do they fit together? Where does it bend? So with the frog's back legs, there's a hip joint right at the rear end. The leg comes out to a knee here, and it kind of sticks out a little bit. Then a very large portion of the leg right here runs back to, this is its ankle, and then a skinnier portion runs through and underneath into the foot that sticks out here. So what I did to make all of those different forms is I have these sections. I made left right leg and right leg sections at the same time. And if you look, they're not super distinct shapes. They're very generalized, bulky versions of what they will become. The beautiful thing about clay is that you can add and take away and add and take away and slowly build up the forms that you want to build. What I'm going to do now is slip and score and add these to the body. It is important when you are building structures like this that if you build something that has two sides that are the same, you build them at the same time. So you can see I made all the leg sections before I attached any of the leg sections. Otherwise, if I just made the left leg attached it and meant to go do the right leg, the shapes would be different on either side. So at this point, I'm gonna slip and score and start building my legs. Once I've attached my different leg parts, I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna start blending. And if you watch me do all of this, I'm not super gentle when I'm doing any of it. Um, I'm really coming in there and starting to make sure things are well blended to each other. Once I've got my legs blended in, I'm gonna start comparing left to right and kind of going in and starting to work on the form of the legs and this is when it's really important to have those reference images that you're looking at that you can be like okay I need to bring this knee up a little bit and this needs to pop out here and I need to round this down and I need to carve this lower so it's really about at this point coming in and just manipulating what you have there and every once in a while you'll notice things like mm, you know what I need to add more clay to this spot or it's not going to work quite right or I need to get rid of some clay here this is way too thick. So what do you do? You carve away and you add in. It's a process of taking away and adding, taking away and adding. You're noticing and you're changing. 
You analyze what is in front of you and you make modifications to make it work. At this point, my frog has all his limbs, two front arms, two back legs. They're not finished, because that's not my goal at this point. It's just to get them attached and the basic shapes right. So I've spent some time adding and removing, carving and manipulating all of those limbs. I also want you to notice that his little feet, front and back, look more like they're wearing mittens than like frog feet. This is what they need to look like in the end. So you can see their little skinny toes. As this clay sets up and I get closer to finishing, I will carve the toes out of this kind of mitten-like piece of clay. And that's what I usually recommend my kids, my students do for their, their feet or their paws on their animals. There's such fine details that if I put them on right now, it's gonna mess things up, but I kind of need to know where those sit. There's a few things that you wanna be careful of when attaching limbs that I wanna go over. So I have this lovely little creature here that I'm gonna use as an example. This creature has tentacles, and a lot of times my students wanna apply tentacles, they want to set them down, kinda of sticking straight out of, of their animal. So they would take the tentacle, they would, you know, slip and score and blend, um, but then they want that tentacle to sit out like this. The problem with doing that on any kind of limb, whether it's a tentacle or a leg that's sticking out, if you imagine a person sitting with their legs sticking out in front of them, is when I go to pick this clay up, every time I pick it up, if I don't pick it straight up, I'm gonna flex this joint and this tip. And as this gets dry, I'm gonna eventually break it off when I'm picking it up and setting it down. This needs support. So you can put a base underneath it if you want legs sticking out into space. But what I tell my students when they attach an item, um, that sticks out at some level. Limbs are the main ones that do this. You want it to connect in at least two points. So here's another tentacle I built. I have the tentacle wrapping back up and it's touching itself, so that's one connection point. I'm gonna have this tentacle come out here and connect back into the body. So it's gonna connect on the body back here, okay, back behind the eye, and it's gonna connect on the body down at this base. So I'm gonna slip, score, and blend, and then you can see what that looks like in the end. When I'm attaching a piece like this, it's kind of like a coil, but I don't want to see, I don't want to blend that tight. I'll often use a paintbrush, just like when I made my coil vessel, if you watch that video. Um, I'll use a paintbrush to go in and blend the slip into that space. So it's a smoother transition, but still really strong. And then around the base of my tentacle, and I do this with limbs as well, if I blend this coil, it's gonna have a really weak connection point there. So what I'm gonna do around the base of that connection is I'm gonna make a little coil. I'm gonna blend it or bend it around where it connects. And really, if you think about the human body or animal bodies, where limbs connect to the body is often the thickest point on that limb anyways. So anatomically, this is going to look more correct regardless, but structurally, it's gonna be stronger too. So as I attach that limb, I'll use that coil, blend that out, and make a really strong connection there. Now this tentacle is gonna be way stronger than the other tentacle that stuck straight out, and it's not gonna break off as you're constructing. And I can tell you, it's super frustrating when you spent a lot of time building an object and we are almost done and all of a sudden things break off. But you can see how if I attach lots of limbs like that, how much stronger this two-point connection is gonna be. So major things to remember when you're completing your limbs. One, look at each limb and its anatomical structure. Decide how many different joints there are. So I've got one, two joints. Think about each section of each leg or arm as a separate piece. There's a bone inside this section. This section's not gonna bend, it's gonna be straight through here. It's gonna bend at the joints. Pay attention to where those limbs connect to the body and how they interact with each other as they move out. Make sure that when you add a limb, you use a coil to connect it to the base to strengthen that connection, and that your limb connects to the body in at least two spots. 
that makes it a lot stronger. If you remember to do those things, you're gonna have great success. Be patient, have fun, and remember to just really analyze your piece as you're building it. Notice what's working and what's not, and make decisions that help you to fix the things that don't work and amplify the things that do. See you next time as we add our spout.